I'm Rick Johansson and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. I want to start off with a thank you. The last video I uploaded was the Inkscape Quick Start Guide and I got some nice notes of appreciation, also some comments on things that we could have included as well and I appreciate it across the board and that's what this channel is for is an open dialogue and helping each other with our Inkscape and any type of design projects we're working on. So enough theory today, I want to go over the circle logo will make this type of template here. Now you might recognize this. This is heavily inspired by one of the English Premier League teams, but I wanted to use it because if we follow along and recreate this, there's some techniques and tricks I'll show you so you can you can make your own or modify it. Also, I signed up to coach my son's kindergarten soccer and I put this in as a placeholder, New England Strikers. The actual team name, I will leave up to them to choose. All right, let's begin. Moving into some open space, I brought the final logo down here so you can see where we are in the process. And I'll have the color codes in the description below for the color palette that we're going to use. Also, a friend of mine mentioned if you want to go very fast, just screen capture the palette and bring it into your own project. We're going to build this logo from the outside and work our way in. So we'll grab the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. If you hold Shift and Control together, when you draw open the circle, it'll stay nice and uniform. You'll see my fill and stroke menu on the side by here populated. If you don't see the menu, it's this paintbrush thing in the corner. I've got a yellow circle with what's called a black stroke. Now I could just eliminate the fill here, the yellow, by clicking on fill and Xing out. And then I could resize the stroke size to make it thicker. But I don't want to do that because since I'm creating a template, I want to have even more control so I can visually change the width of things on the fly. And that is done with path effects. So let's go back to put the fill back in there, take the stroke off altogether. So now I've got a big yellow circle, but I'm going to be making this dark blue outer circle first. I can choose eyedropper, which will then take the selected object and change it to whatever color I click on. So there's our blue. I'm going to stamp out the inside so we have our ring. And that's our first technique here. So I'm going to go with the selector tool. Control D will duplicate it. So I have a blue circle and a blue circle. To make it easier, I'll change the top one to green. Holding shift and control, I can then eyeball the width that I want. So we'll start with that just to get things going. If I hold shift, I want to select both of them. You need both objects selected, which will allow you to do the path functions. And the one that we want is up on path difference. So that's stamped out the top object and we're left with this ring, which is great. But if I want to be able to manipulate it on the fly, I'm going to add that path effect. So with it selected, go to path path effects and you'll get a tab up in your sidebar. So click the plus and there's a whole menu of different things you can do. For today, we just want offset. Nothing happens. You need to go to edit paths by node to get the functionality of offset. So I click on edit paths by node and now with this little circle, I can change the width to thin or thick on the fly and it retains this feature the whole time during the project. So we can come back to this and change the width, change the color. It's always going to be there. That's why I choose this method. Why don't we go with this width for now and next will be the little light blue circle. So I'll do control D which duplicates it. Again, you can't see it just yet. Eyedropper will go light blue. Same thing, edit paths by node. And if I choose, see how it's kind of snapping? If you have snapping enabled, this is a great feature that helps you line things up. But, in, but for now, I'm going to take it off. So snapping is now off and it will let me move with more freedom. On to the inner circle here. I'll do control D. Again, we'll duplicate it, hold shift and control, and it will size itself right in. Try about here, change the color to the dark. And if you choose, you can go back to edit paths by node and you can widen that. Time to wrap some text around a circle. We'll start with the top where it says New England. So we'll bend it this way. I choose to create edit text objects. We write New England. And for the font, I'm on Arial, which is something everybody should have on their computer. Bold is the style. The size is 85 points. And you can change the font if you want or the size, but this will work well in here. And I want to add some extra space in between the letters. That's called kerning. So the kerning, if you're selected on your object or you have the edit text, you'll have this up here, this modification area. And where it has an AA space between the letters, let's change that to... Five. You see how that expanded it a little bit? That'll help fill up the space better. Speaking of space, let's make some more room so I can show you how to bend the text without bunching up over here. So I'm going to make a new circle, hold shift and control. And for now, the size doesn't matter because we can 
resize it once it's in place. With the circle selected, I'll hold shift and add the text to the selection. So both are now selected. Go up to text, put on path. And that makes your perfect arc based on the guide circle that we just made. Let's go put it back into place and see how the sizing looks. Off by a little bit and that's no problem. I'm gonna click off of everything. When I move the guide circle, it's gonna move the words, but don't worry about that. So I move it over here so we can see what we're doing. Get your text, put it into place. And these are forever connected. So if I hold shift and control to modify the circle, it's going to move the text as well. And now that I see it in place, I like the spacing of the arc and the size of the font, but I wanna add a little bit more weight one way you can do that is go to, if you have it selected, go to stroke paint and activate the stroke. Now that was very subtle. If I go to stroke size, it's on 0.265 millimeters. Let's go to 0.5 millimeters. If you have a font that you like that doesn't have a bold setting, you can add bold yourself by doing this little trick. All right, let's do the bottom text now. I could just keep typing off of this circle, but normally on logos, it's not upside down on the bottom. So we need a new guide circle. I'll do control D. And take the top one. For this one, because it's going to get put on the inside bottom, it's going to get compacted. So I'll make a larger guide circle and we can always change it later. Don't worry. Let's go to our font and write strikers. For the bottom, I will need some more width between the letters. So I'll go to 25. Let's go with this. So I've got it here. It doesn't have to be centered. The text is selected. I'll hold shift. I got the guide circle text put on path. So this is the same process we did, but to get it on the inside, make sure they're both selected, go to object, flip vertical, and there it is on the inside. Move it up here. That's pretty close for a guess. I'm still gonna modify the guide circle. So this guide circle is paired with that. I'm gonna click on it, hold shift and control so it's nice and even. I'll bring down this visual guide as well, and then delete out that guide. I like that, but we didn't add the weight yet. Click on the bottom text, go to stroke, add the stroke. The stroke style I think was 0.5. Okay, off camera, I changed the color of the text. And if you did add width like I did to the text, just make sure you change the color of the stroke as well. I think this looks good visually, but if I wanna be very, very precise, like if this was for a client or something, I'm gonna use the align and distribute menu, which is this thing here, this bar graph, click on that, and we'll choose align relative to last selected. So the first selected is my strikers, I'll hold shift, and the last selected will be this inner circle, which I know is perfectly aligned. And this one right here is center on a vertical axis, it lines it up, so it was off center a little bit. For this logo, I'm gonna do the shield with the stripes and the soccer ball, but I might save it right here as a template that I can use as a starting point when I'm making circle logos, because I've already got my inner outer text. As an example, you could just retype Ocean Avenue. <laughs> Ocean Avenue. I think I went to school on Ocean Avenue. Dolphins. Control Z to delete out of that. Back to the task at hand. Before we do the shield, I'm gonna make the circle that's underneath it. So I'll grab circle, change the fill to that light blue. I see a stroke, which I don't want. So I choose stroke X out of that, put it in visually, and then I'll use the line and distribute menu to make it perfect. Circle selected, ring selected, vertical, horizontal. All right, let's do the shield now. I moved down to some open space so we can build here. And there's a special tool at the bottom of the toolbar. It's called do geometric constructions we're going to use. First, we'll get a rectangle open. To make the shortcut work, I need to change this to a path. So path, object to path. I'll go to do geometric constructions. And up here, this one looks like a fish cut in half. It's called mirror symmetry. Click there and it's going to double your shape. And if you go to edit paths by nodes, let's move over so we can see it. Whatever you do to one side is mirrored on the other, which is perfect for making things like shields that have to have a uniform curve on both sides. Move it around so it looks decent. And if you take this node right here and delete that, you'll get a curve and the handles will allow you to modify their proportions the way you like it. Let's bring it over onto our logo, make it a little taller. The symmetry tool is still there so I can go back to edit paths by node and make changes that way as well. I think that looks okay. Now I do wanna lock this into one unified object. To do that, I'll click on it, 
go to path union. I'm actually gonna make that the blue outline borders. Let's change this to blue. I'll duplicate that and I'll shrink it in. Let's change the top one to the gold. And using the regular handles, I'll just hold shift and control, which keeps it in proportion. I'll bring that in one more time, duplicate that, change that one to the white. Scale that down and we have our interior shield, which I have to cut in half. A lot of different ways you can slice things up. A quick and easy one, get the Bezier pen tool to make a straight line or, or at least lock in a straight line. I'll hold control, I click it once, double click, and I've got a blank line because my stroke is off. Fix that, now you can see it. Hold shift and add the shield so both items are selected. Go to path, division. It's gonna cut that in half. I'll take the top one, bring that up. Take the bottom one, bring that down. All right, this brings us to the part of the tutorial I was looking forward to most because I want to show you how to make a custom pattern. This bottom part right here, we know how to change the fill to different colors or even gradients, but this right here, this says pattern. There's preset patterns in here, which can do some cool things, but I want to show you how to make your own on the fly. So let's change it back to white for now. I'm going to make the stripes with the rectangle tool. Let's make one bar here, control D. I'll duplicate that. Here's an example where you do want snapping. I disabled it earlier, but if I re-enable snapping, see how it just clicks into place? That's what I want. I'll go to make that one light. I'll group the two of them, control D. That'll snap into place, control D, and there's my pattern. If I group this together, I now have this object, and if I go to object, pattern, object to pattern, it now just created here, see my pattern fill, populated pattern, 11697. Well, how do we use that? So I click on this, I go to my pattern, 11617, but it's not exactly the way I want it. Blah, 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 use the node tool. If you, use, if you click on the node tool like it says, Nothing happens and you're going to wonder what's up. At least for my Inkscape, I don't know if it's a glitch. I got to zoom way out. There it is. You're looking for the X, the circle, and the square. These are the editing tools that need to be on top of your pattern. So let's zoom back in. What I did right there is I took the black X that was way out in left field and brought it into on top of the shield because that's our pivot point. This circle, it goes along with the editing of the pattern. You can change the direction of the pattern and the square down here is the scale. So if I bring it in, you'll see my stripes come closer together. And with my red circle, I pivot. You have complete control. So it's pretty cool. You can build your own pattern on the fly. And let's say I want to move the actual stripes inside the shape. There's where you can take the black X again and move it around. Maybe make it a little more angled. That's good. Ready to see Inkscape flex its muscles? Remember, Inkscape at its core is software that runs basically math and algorithms to create all these different vectors and shapes for us. They have under extensions something called Render 3D Polyhedron. Click on that and you'll get a menu box and under Model File, they have Cube, Snub Cube, Tetrahedron, all these really common terms, including soccer ball. But it's actually pronounced truncated icosahedron. Truncated icosahedron. I had to look it up. It's basically a geometric shape that has 12 pentagons and then 20 hexagons. It looks a lot like a soccer ball. Now there's lots of modifications you can do. I just kept it at the default. So with the default, if I do live preview, it actually comes off screen. I'm just going to go with the ply. Close. Let's go find it. Here it is. It looks like a soccer ball to me. Now, if you want to go for realism and keep the shading or even round out the perimeter, you can play with it and use the edit paths by node, but I'm going to go for more of a geometric look. So first, let's modify the seams here. So I'll go to stroke. For the width, we'll try 2.0 and we'll change the color to white. I'm going to have a white background behind all of this at the end. Let's change the whole thing's fill to darker and I'll just do the top part to have a slight value change. I'll double click to get a piece of it and I'll hold shift to collect the other panels that I want and we'll do eyedropper or the lighter one. Group the whole thing together by clicking into no man's land, control G, size it down. I'm going to keep it in the top panel and that will do it just for a final touch if you're going to print this out or use it someplace i would drop a opaque white circle behind everything so it prints out properly right now there is some transparency there but that is our circle logo template i can use this again you can use this if you made it along if you have questions leave them down below and thanks
truncated icosahedron.